and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Paranormal Portal Pieces. Uh, this is our clip show where we take uh, long format shows that are on our, our normal YouTube channel at youtube.com slash paranormal portal, and we make little more digestible bite-sized chunks of them. This is an interview that uh, we did with Linda Godfrey and her research partner, Lee Hemphill. Now, Linda and Lee have worked together for a long time, and Lee actually has the property on Bray Road um, that Linda and he have been researching uh, for quite a while, and they had some really incredible things happening. And on this clip, you're also going to see the world premiere of a few uh, trail cam images that Lee was able to capture during one such investigation, and uh, it's really amazing. I don't know what to make of it other than something fantastic is going on there and something terrifying is going on there. So uh, just another segment of our, our, our interviews with Linda Godfrey. So I hope you enjoy this. Now, Linda, you had yeah. sent, sent me these three photos, uh, speaking of an anomaly, and uh, these, of course, are images we can show the viewers. Um, would you like to explain what is going on in these three, three, three captures here? Let's let Lee do that because they're they're his uh, photo captures. But I'll just say I never have seen anything quite like these. Yeah, yeah, me either. I'm gonna drag what, it over to what, me. What's what ones do? You, yeah, which ones do you have, Brad? Um, Those the, latest ones, Lee. The the ones that I said look like the bottle openers missing one side. Okay. That's that set of so three. That, yeah, yeah. Um, that, so that's just from last week. It right. says July eighth on the on on these the are, these pic, are July on the picture. 13th. Yeah, July thirteenth. Yeah. That's that's uh, yeah. That's operator error. I did reset that camera. <laughs> I have two cameras out at this time. Okay. And it is June eighth, so I had to reset that camera because uh, I I I want to have two cameras out um, at this particular time, and so that camera. I, actually, that was just one camera at that time, but I had reset it. So that is June 8th, I think. Or that says June 8th on there, or June 13th? It says July, thir July 13th. July 13th. Yeah. It says July 13th on July, the image. July 13th? Yeah. Okay, that is that is actually June 13th, yes. June 13th. Otherwise, the time is correct. In the thing. Okay. Right. I, I have, to, I mean, that picture, I mean, if you look at that picture, that image appears to be, rather large and i mean i mean it, it does it takes i, I can't mistake. even describe it well and you should also mention lee that this is three photos taken within one second um of exposure correct correct right. and that this is actually the middle picture the first picture did not have a, that image on there in the tree and then the second picture which is approximately half a second long a little bit less than that actually is the image is there mm -hmm. and then the third picture um the image that image is gone so that image is just there for a half a second yeah i, I have i have my camera moultrie cam yeah it's set I mean, up to do a burst of three right it looks solid yeah. that's the weird thing you know and, and maybe some camera expert will have um the answer to this and can let us know because um, I know Lee and I both try very hard to rule out any other possibilities, you know, before we go to the unexplainable side. And cameras can do strange things, but um, the first one to me looked a little bit blurred as if it were getting ready to do something, and something set that camera off. And there's no other visible um, thing except for a little light form that's crawling or moving across the field. Right, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, and it does yeah. it does move with every shot. That little, whether it's a bug or or what, gliding across there. Well, I mean, I mean that that's remember that I have it's a multi camera and I set it on a burst of three. So if it gets triggered, it takes three pictures within a second. Wow! So that little white light that's moving, yeah, that couldn't has a gone a long distance. But, yeah, yeah, that's not a that's not a bug. Right. Yeah, that'd be too much. Uh, yeah. Far too big, too big a stretch in each frame for it to be an insect. Correct. Yeah. Correct. No, I agree. And, I, and I've had, I've, I've had many triggers, and I call Moultrie and I say, "What triggers your cameras?" Mm -hmm. And this is, I, I have had seven cameras out there, different companies, and they've all performed the same way. They all get the mist, and they all get triggered 
without an animal in in the in the picture. Mm-hmm. Moultrie says you have to have motion and heat to trigger their cameras. Wow. Well, if I have motion and heat, then there then some of these light sources that I have pictures of because I have orbs going, I have orb pictures. Perhaps you know, I mean, there's there's actual heat in 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 the in in or motion in, in in this in these orbs or in this situation, what set that camera off the first one? That object is not in the first picture. Yeah, it, it's just it's in the second picture. It it does. I mean, it's got the object has shading to it as well, which would seem to denote a a, a three D presence. I mean, there are bright points mm-hmm. and dim points. It's not just a monochrome kind of thing no. and it's got several tonal variations that would seem to indicate it has a depth to it in the in the field of light so that's really impressive yes. it <clears> is <throat> you know and it's and it looks like it has this very defined rim area and then a center hole you know and it's right exactly where the orange things that we thought were looked like portals mm-hmm. were also and um, it's the spot from which Probably one of the creepiest experiments that we had. Remember, Lee, the the um, the deer that was chopped. It was a pretty large deer too. It was sort of dismembered and eaten, you know. And then something um, picked up the carcass. And I don't want to be conflating this with another one. Maybe I'm 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 mixing up too. But we had one where the deer head and spinal column were out in the middle of the field. Something had taken it out there wow. and left it and. You could see where the neck was twisted and then um, somehow sharply cut away. And Lee took that to a butcher and said, what would I have to do to this? What would I have to use to get this result? And the butcher told him, you'd have to have, um, you know, a, a meat cutting. What would you call it? There's a technical word a for it. Cleaver. A cleaver. Yeah. A cleaver. A cleaver, you know, with a board underneath it you know, and a very strong arm to get this. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that Lee doesn't have crazy people with cleavers and, you know, butcher knives and whatever <laughs> running around his field at night. Right. So what does that leave? Let's, let's continue. That's the deer that so I had 15 deer were carried away. Now, coyotes, they eat the deer and, and they, they go back to their young and disgorge. They don't carry the deer away or parts of the deer. I've had front quarters taken off of deer mm-hmm. and just the front Surg- leg carried away. Surgically. Wow. I mean, it looks surgically, sur- yes. Yeah, it looks like a surgical instrument, did it? And in fact, in my book, Monsters Among Us, um, I have a photo of that one where the, the leg is taken surg- surgically. And a friend of mine from northern Wisconsin. Un, had no idea about these things, showed me a photo that a farmer had sent him. This is also in the book that has the exact same front leg quarter surgically taken from um, a cow out in his field. So we've got classic cattle mutilation, deer mutilation going on out there. Oh, wow. So so to continue with, with uh, Linda, this is the one that where Linda, so I decided... I would buy an iPhone because my deer kept getting carried away. Where are they getting carried to? <laughs> okay. So, so I bought an iPhone and a pouch, a, a waterproof pouch, and I had the bright idea that I was going to put this pouch, water, the iPhone and the pouch into the, the deer's mouth and down his throat. So, <laughs> Linda's, so we're trying to put, try, try to put this iPhone and pouch down this deer's, this, you know, this, <laughs> the the roadkill deer's throat and Linda's helping me. We're tra- opening the mouth. We're trying to put it in this deer and and it was unsuccessful. So I had I I bought some parachute cord and secured the pouch around that deer's neck. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and this is with really the, strong. With the parachute. Really, really strong cord. Very. Yeah. I mean, you can't imagine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and the iPhone was in this waterproof couch or p- pouch. Right, and that deer, the the coyotes. I mean, I have coyotes there, sure. and when when I go there, and the the rear end is eaten because they eat the back end because that's the better meat, and I go to my cameras and here the coyote came and ate on the deer. Okay, you know, 
But if I go there and other phenomenons have happened, such as the front quarter is removed, I either have no pictures or I have this mist. Mm -hmm. But this particular deer the coyotes had eaten on and had pulled it out in my field uh, probably 100 feet. Um, yeah. You know, they'll pull on them. And I took a picture on a Monday afternoon, and the iPhone is still on the deer around his neck, and the the rear of the deer is <clears throat> mostly eaten off. And the next morning I went out there at 9.30, and my iPhone, the, the parachute cord is cut, and the iPhone is laying approximately six feet away from the deer, and the deer's head is gone, is missing. And, and, and that, that and deer was full it, of maggots. It, it, or it was it was at least rancid that no yeah. human would be wanting that meat. And you'd think that if they'd gone to that trouble to somehow sever that very hard to sever cord that they wanted the iPhone, but the iPhone was still there. So none of it was making sense. Yeah, very very strange. And and, and, and I, I I picked that car I picked that carcass up. I still have it. And like I said, I did take it to a meat carver. A meat cutter, and he didn't. He doesn't know anything, you know, about the situation. Sure. And I just said, how could the, how was his ears had removed? And you can see that one of the vertebrae is cut directly through. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow! And, I've got and, pictures of that in my and, book too. Yeah, yeah. It's. It, I have to say that that afternoon spent trying to insert an iPhone into um, a dead deer. <laughs> <laughs> on top of a wagon. It breaks with one of the weirdest afternoons of my lifetime. <laughs> well, you can check that off your bucket list, Linda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there are all kinds of places where you think it might go in, but it doesn't. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Even after the coyotes get it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow, yeah. So Yeah, so I have that. I have that deer, the rest of that deer carcass, and um, it, it's just it, like I said, the the meat car, meat cutters that certainly looked like them had been removed by a cleaver, and somebody had chopped the deer's head off. Hey, everybody! Thank you once again for checking out this episode. I sure hope you loved it. Uh, it's always an honor for me to have done these episodes and to listen back to them is sure uh, a feeling of great pride. But thank you so much for being a part of this and for taking your time to check them out. Uh, we sure hope that you'll subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified anytime any new episodes of Paranormal Portal Pieces comes up. But we also hope that you'll check out our, our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash paranormal portal for the full length interviews and shows that we do over there. And we do live shows every Wednesday through Sunday night. And so there's always something cooking over there and we'd love to have you become a part of that. So check that out, get subscribed over there as well. And, uh, hopefully you'll continue to come back and, uh, continue to enjoy the shows, but thank you so much. Have a great night and hopefully we'll see you soon.